Hey, how's it going, everybody? If you're new here, welcome in. And if you've been here before, welcome back. I'm Roll Shambeau, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And today we've got a special episode because I was tagged by Rob's Nerdy Knives in a theme. Uh, the theme is your top five favorite knives in your collection. And this one is an amazing knife. The Precision Knife Works Worn Tack, but it's actually not in my top five in my collection regardless. So what is, what makes it the best top five knives ever? Well, we're gonna go ahead and count it down. And you know what, these are in no particular order, but we are going to start off with one. This one is the Arcane Designs Plexus. This is a design collaboration uh, between Arcane Designs and Elijah Isham, may he rest in peace. And this knife is is different. And if you've seen my episodes before, you know that I'm a huge fan of, of different because we get so much of the same in today's knife world that it's nice to get something that is not like everything else. And whether it's these inlays or onlays or whatever they are that kind of fractaling out or the insane window that we get on this knife, which is not supposed to be usable, but if you are willing to sacrifice a little bit of the meat on your finger, it is in fact usable. Or just the insanely good ergos on this knife with this beautiful compound grind Japanese style Tonto blade with this ridiculously long swedge. I love this knife. This knife is, well, it's really freaking cool. And it's a bit of an homage to Elijah Isham because this is in fact the last knife that he designed before he passed away. As a fan of knives, as a collector and an enthusiast, as someone that likes to carry what they own, this knife checks off a lot of boxes. And in my opinion, it has the smoothest bearing action out of any knife in my collection. The action is smooth, it sounds good, it's got a backspacer, 3D mill, titanium pocket clip, M390. This one is definitely one of my favorites in my collection. Next up, we've got potentially, no, most definitely the most expensive American-made knife that I have. This is the Strider AR.75. And you'll notice that I actually put a mirror polished edge on this knife, uh, but it's not a perfect mirror because yes, I carry this and yes, I use it. It's a frame lock. And the crazy thing about this knife is, is that the fit and finish could honestly use a little bit of work. Uh, for example, the deployment hole here is not completely chamfered down here on the edges. It is a tiny bit sharp. And this lock bar, while it has plenty of access, it's not the most comfortable lock bar to disengage. And so you might be wondering, well, how can it be one of your most favorite top five knives if you know it, it doesn't have the most perfect fit and finish? Easy. First of all, the action is running on washers and the lockup is, it's damn perfect. There's less than zero blade play. It, you could hand this to someone that was blind and they'd think it was a fixed blade. It's got this overbuilt blade geometry, which is unapologetic about what it does. And this nice deep tanto style grind, which I really love. It also does this thing where it was, the blade was polished, but it was stonewashed beneath. In fact, you can see, if you look really closely, you can actually see the striations from the satin. And then it's like they did a stonewash over it as if they were telling you, you know what, cherish this knife. Adore this knife, put it in your display case, but don't you dare let it sit there without using it because it's meant to be used. And the handle scales are, they came stonewashed from the factory and it's a beautiful stonewash and it encourages you to carry it because that patina is going to look really good over time. These handle scales have only improved since this came into my collection and I love carrying it. I think that it looks fantastic. It is heavy. Uh, but it's got this really awesome sawtooth jimping. The ergos are actually surprisingly good, despite the fact that things like the thumb hole and the lock bar 
uh, weren't the most comfortable things ever, but I love the action. The action was terrible when I got it out of the box, but running on phosphor bronze washers, it actually improved over time. It has this true hydraulic feel to it. And when you deploy it, even if you do have to put a little bit of cayenne on it, it snaps open. I really like these exposed stop pins, which are part of the knife. And there's very minimal billboarding. The S45 VN on here is really well done. And I also thoroughly enjoy the slant on this back handle scale uh, because it makes it great in a reverse grip as well. And if you know me, I like a really good reverse grip. This is a knife that some people really like, some people really don't, but I have yet to find someone that holds one and doesn't say good things about it. Now I can't talk about my most favorite knives in my collection without talking about my modified Spyderco smock. And this knife is sweet, okay? It does have the stock S30V blade, but that's where it ends because these handle scales are custom one of one Kevin Smock Titanium Purple Anno Scales. Uh, if you follow Kevin Smock, he's the designer of the Spider Coast Smock. He does these limited scale releases, and after he releases a certain scale design, he retires it, or at least I haven't seen him come back out with the same design twice. And so it's nice because for you know 150 bucks, you get something that makes the knife really unique to you and not something that a whole lot of other people have. There's a billion and one Spyderco smocks out there, but this is the only one that looks like this. I also put a titanium pocket clip on there. And also after watching my video on this knife, uh, Kevin Smock actually sent me, he was cool enough to send me some of his custom made bearings, which he usually reserves for his custom knives. And it makes the action super good. It's somewhere between hydraulic and guillotine, and it's really awesome. And it also lends to making this knife, you know, one of one, despite the fact that the blade came from a regular old S30V Spyderco smock. The ergos on it are great. The fidget factor is out of this world, and it sacrifices absolutely nothing to get there. This knife is an absolute joy to carry. It's a joy to use. And even though my fingerprints always tend to dull the shine of that purple anno, you know, a quick wipe with the cloth and it's back. And honestly, this is one, one of those knives that I truly cherish in my collection. It's unique and it's personal to me and it's got a story behind it. And I love knives with stories. And we're getting close to the finish line. So it's time that we talk about this guy. This is the... Midgard's Messer Thunrar, and this this knife is chunky. We've got a quarter inch thick blade spine here, full body length backspacer, um, titanium handle scales. It's CPM D2 on the blade, which basically takes all of the good things about D2 and it makes them even better. And then it also gets rid of a lot of its weaknesses. This is a knife which a lot of people would look at as purely a collector's piece. Like, how could you use that? But I assure you, Regardless of the fact that this knife weighs about 12 ounces, I have and do carry it frequently. I absolutely fell in love with the fact, despite the thick spine of the blade being about a quarter inch, uh, the geometry of the blade allows it to be extremely slicey. I've done multiple videos on this knife just showing it shearing through cardboard and through paper. And, you know, a knife of this size has no business doing that, but it's also a conversation starter. This is one of those knives where if I pull it out of my pocket and you're not terrified immediately, you'll probably ask me what it is and see if you can hold it. The action is a guillotine, and you don't want your fingers to get cut, caught there because if they will get chopped off. But it's one of those knives where people are really surprised because I can open it one-handed using that fuller. It is not perfect by any stretch, but it's one of those knives that I love because it brings me joy to carry, and it also is fun to talk about with others. It's, it's just a piece that I really couldn't see outside of my collection. And I think that most people that like overbuilt knives would absolutely love it. Lastly, we have the Merlot Micarta TRM Shadow, quite possibly the sliciest knife in my collection. And TRM is one of those company, companies that's American made and they do such a good job. And no matter whether it's their bent 
titanium pocket clips, which they make in house, or the fact that they give you a truly deep carry clip with the inset screws and the flat screws and everything just looks good. And the fit and finish is perfect. It's a company that I believe, you know, given another 10 or 20 years could potentially give Spyderco a run for their money. TRM or Three Rivers Manufacturing is highly loved and highly touted. However, what makes this knife so special to me and absolutely one of my favorite top five in my collection is the fact that this is the knife I was carrying the day my daughter was born. I'm a huge fan of knives that come with stories and also passing them on to the generations that come after us. And eventually when she comes of age and she leaves the house, this is the knife that I will give her and I will tell her about the day she was born and how this was the knife that was in my pocket. And I know that this is a design that will stand the test of time. When I decided to put this in my pocket on that fateful day, I did so knowing full well that with the build quality and the quality materials, that this is something that would make it that long. Let me know in the comment section down below. Have you ever passed on a knife to the generation that came after you? Is that something that you're considering doing? Do you like knives with a story? I'm going to go ahead and tag my friend duties daggers and also knife dope show me the top five knives in your collections fellas and let me know what you think about the ones that i listed down below if you want to see more awesome knife content make sure to click on one of the videos that pops up next